So we're inspecting this CYC motor. We just dismounted it from the bike, which was real easy. Um, now we're taking a look at the stator. We have a replacement uh, rotor here, internal stator, but this is jammed up, so we want to figure out why it's locked up the way it is. Um, so we've already taken off the top cap free wheel and we've already done the back side as well uh, by prying off this case very slowly so now we're we're gonna inspect this now and see what's wrong so in order to pull off this side of the cap simply put the screw back in but instead of tightening it all the way put a nut in between right here and then loosen the nut and that will pull the cap off slowly without needing to bang on it or do anything else you can see it's starting to separate how you pry that off real slow by just turning those two bolts prying it out slowly until it comes out so now we can go ahead and inspect the stator and see what's wrong with this particular motor i'm gonna put this badass punch into this bearing see if that'll come off here have some damage as well hopefully not too much hopefully we can salvage this what's interesting is that the this particular stator with these magnets on here is the version 2 which is supposed to have you know resolve this issue um, apparently this was happening a lot with the gen 1 type of rotor but uh, I can tell you now that the tolerances are really tight between this and the fitting inside of the motor itself but you can see that the magnets are just glued on there there's nothing else holding them them there besides glue which is really interesting um, and this rotor once these magnets break and it's a little shards like this some of these got grinded down into real fine powder it's really interesting um, but also they were wearing away the inside of the coils so I'm not sure how these are going to function at this point I'm not sure how much wear there is um, I'm, I, I'm not even sure if the surface area will cause a short or anything. I don't think it will but um, you know these coils you know the, the, the material has been definitely resurfaced you can tell where it was hit rubbing and where it wasn't we'll just pop off stator using the wedge hammer method
stator out we'll put it on a surface like this vise here where we can bang on it and let the gears come apart onto the shelf so we'll go ahead and do that now all this in the ultrasonic parts washer we put it back together with a different type of grease this is a this is a no zone here all right so reassembly time we've got all our parts cleaned up um, we just need to take the this pinion uh, off of the old stator and put it on the new one so let's go ahead and do that so we'll start with the stator put the gearbox upside down like this. And we'll go ahead and smack this right in there. Side, you should see the spindle. So we'll go ahead and slide this tiny pinion back onto the shaft of the motor, just like that. And now the gear lining it up with that pinion slide right over as well just like that and then we'll do the o-ring oh sorry uh c c ring c clip so you'll need a set of clip pliers We can press the gear box back together and of course before we do that we gotta grease everything up back to how it was before so that when it spins at high velocity you don't get seizures um, so yeah this is the fun part That should be enough. There's no specs on how much grease to put, so you know, liberal amount I'm gonna go with. in there we'll give it a light tap
So I just worked on it off camera, tapping it real slow, making sure not to tap this fine ring here, but the uh, the case itself, so you don't accidentally bend, bend this, because it looks like it's real easy to bend that lip, so I wouldn't bang on that if I were you. Um, but yeah, once you get it all in there and set, um, make sure the grease is all good. You can hear it, it's greasy in there, so yeah, we're good on that. Now let's do the rest. So next step is this outer shaft uh, with the coils, making sure that um, the shaft itself is seated all the way inside of the outer casing. So make sure that that's seated. Make sure this is lined up. Make sure that this slot is in, in the groove there. That's how you can get your alignment. Um, and uh, yeah, so we'll just go ahead and press this back together into here making sure that this o-ring make sure you get that on the outside that you don't crush this o-ring there um it looks like you know real easy to crush if you're not, not careful so i'm gonna pull on this o-ring manually i'm gonna slide the gear up oh shit. with the light tap again. Voila, it's flush. Perfect. So the old stator had this O-ring that we removed uh, before the bearing. The new one has it pre-installed, so we don't have to worry about that particular, sorry, not O-ring, C-clip. Um, but we will press the bearing now, so we'll just get it kind of pre-started there. Give it a good whack. So the next deal is the outer casing. Um, there's this wafer wash washer thing um, to keep everything pressurized. Go ahead and slide that right into the case, or alternatively, put it on your bearing like this, and then press your case down. So we'll put this uh, finishing glass back on, making sure all these little rubber grommets are in their little spots and uh, I'm just placing this right on top. Screwing it all back down. We're almost through. Um, we've just got to assemble the, the face for the uh, gear and we're, and we're done. So that sprocket, um, this motor, man, is like really, really powerful. So for people riding this motor on 72 volts, especially like on this bike here, which uh, has only one gear, um, you know, that's a lot of torque for this little motor. And regardless of what um, of what controller you're using, battery, or, uh, the tolerances of the motor itself cannot tolerate such torque so my guess is that the stator rocks inside of the uh, case which is what causes it to uh, to rub and then potentially break um, I don't know if it's to do with the high RPM RPMs more than it has to do with the alignment itself when it's under load you know I assume there must be some flex to it now the face go ahead and give this a little spin Oh yeah, it feels smooth. It actually works. So now we'll go ahead and do the final touch, which is put this cap back on. Um, 
I'm gonna say, see, okay, there's the slot. So we're just lining up the slot to there. Let's grease this up first. Just cut a whole bunch on this thing for no reason. So keeping in mind that the motor is facing that way, right, with our wires facing that way, I'm going to want to put this final piece on so that where it, it aligns with the mounts here. nicely and then we'll just line this up and uh, we'll go ahead and mount it where these two threaded holes here are you know opposite of the cables so vertical so there it is fully assembled see it spins well now this one has a dual motor but yeah, let's take a look at uh, full assembly here. Looks good now. Looks centered. There's almost no tolerance there. You can see it's very close. Pretty incredible. But we'll see how long it lasts now. <laughs> 